In this video, we're going to be putting together the first half of a tutorial on a minimalist movie poster. Minimalist, I use that word a little bit loosely. Uh, it's really going to be a plain R one, but minimal in terms of minimal in terms of not so much complexity. When I do a new document, I'm going to open up one at the size of 2400 in width by 3600 in height, which will give me something that's equivalent to. Uh, a 24 by 36 poster with plenty of space to work. Uh, when you have a higher resolution of canvas, it allows you to tweak small elements a lot more than if you have a smaller one, even in a vector-based setting like Illustrator. So I'm going to open up the sample of what we're going to be working on. I might have to let the computer do a little bit of thinking in order to get to that point. I've got an image that shows the final goal. And so I'm putting together a, a version of a Great Escape poster, a, a poster for the film Great Escape. During this tutorial, we're going to get mostly through the construction of the bottom here and of the motorcycle. So these are the two things. With these more abstract and plain art movie posters, you often get dual imagery like this, some kind of work with silhouettes that allows you to put image within image and also play with really intense background colors is one of the appealing parts of this style if you go and you search for something like minimalist movie poster or uh, look at the work of Saul Bass or study up on the movement of Plackett Steel uh, which took place in the early 20th century you'll find remnants of this uh, style of design uh, present in all of those it's flattened out it's simple it's straightforward. So this is what we're going to be making. We're going to start with the ground plane down here uh, with all of these elements that's built from uh, basic shapes. Essentially, uh, in this poster and in this design uh, project, the ones that are being worked on in Arts 220, you have three kinds of image creation. There's working with basic shapes, there's tracing with the pen tool, and then there's the actual image trace function which I used for the barbed wire. So tracing with the pen tool is the motorcycle, the basic shapes is this prison compound that you see uh, at the very bottom of the frame. So we're going to start there. My posters, whenever I do this tutorial, it never looks identical, but it's going to be in the ballpark of what you see there. I'm not really concerned about getting it perfect, just enough that we can mimic the construction of those elements. So I'm going to start with uh, down here at the bottom just creating that ground plane. So this is where all the buildings are going to sit. Um, one of the more important elements, the more complex elements I should say, are these guard towers. They're also built from rectangles and triangle, uh, but they're the thing that takes the longest to build. Obviously there's four of them and they're in different sizes, but Clearly we're just going to build one and then copy and paste. You should never build an element twice unless you need to or you need it to look different in some way. So I'm going to start just with the, the top of it. I'm going to build out what would be the leg of this tower. Again, just working with the rectangles. That's pretty much all we're going to do this time around. I'm going to rotate it. And it's going to have to be the same on both sides. So once I rotate it to make sure that I get one that's perfect on the other side, I could have sat there and measured out the angle, but sometimes I want the angle to be a little more organic. I'm looking for what fits best. So I'm going to copy and paste that and use Object Transform Reflect to flip it around and get a perfect opposing angle. Line those up. Now it's going to be something similar for the cross beams. I'll create another line of a similar weight and I'll just rotate that one at a 45 degree angle. Make sure it's long enough to cover essentially. Then same thing with that. Copy, paste. And with this one I can actually just hold shift and, and rotate it until I get a a perfect opposite. These are not quite centered up so I'll try and push them so that they are. 
and then I'll use the eraser to trim off the edges. As long as I have these selected, it's only going to erase what I have selected, so it's not going to hurt my the rest of my design behind it. Okay, so there's cross beams. Uh, now we have to deal with the roof. Uh, the triangle tool has become interesting <laughs> in Illustrator with some of the later updates. If I click and drag out from the polygon tool and I'm just sitting here holding it, I can use the arrow keys to drop down the number of sides. But if I hold shift and scale it down, sometimes it, it turns it at a weird angle. This time it did fine. It turned it right side up, but occasionally it'll turn at a strange angle where the top of it is either down in this corner or on the other. Just watch out for that. It makes it a little bit harder to resize, but I'll flatten this out some. Place it on the top, scale it down just a bit. There we go, that works. Now I'm gonna take all of these pieces, which are just fills, fill shapes without a stroke around them. You can see up here at the top, they're all dark gray, they have no stroke. And I'm gonna use the Pathfinder, which you can access from the window menu, listed alphabetically if it's not already visible. And I'll use this first button on the top row that says Unite pull that together. Now this is a single shape and I need to cut a window out of it. So I'm gonna put a little window in here. I'll change the color so it's visible and I want to actually cut it through so I'll select both and use the second button on the top row which is minus front. Now I have a guard tower. Something that I can shrink down place over here let me look at the other tab and see roughly how big it is. So, about like that. That seems right to me. I'll copy and paste. I'll try to get it lined up properly. You know, I could use Command R, bring down a guideline to help me get these lined up. It looks like they're in about the right spot. As far as close to the edge, that looks about right. Copy and paste that. Make those smaller so that there's another pair that's in the distance. Let's make it quite a bit smaller. And then I'll also change those to a lighter gray. Make it feel like they recede into the distance a little bit. Obviously now they're overlapping with the ground plane. So I can just use select that ground plane. It's all on the same layer here. And do object, arrange, and bring to front. And then it overlaps. Now I've got to build the this little compound building in the middle, which that one is really simple. The, the bottom part of it is just a rectangle, which my proportions are a little different, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna pull that in some. And then the roof of it is actually built with the pen tool because it's just a, a shape that's built and then copied and flipped so that it's the same on either side. I don't like trying to match angles or get any of that uh, accurate so my preference by far is just to create a shape like this copy and paste and then object transform reflect And once all those are together, I'll merge those too. To make it seem like there's a lot more buildings here, I like to have them hanging over the edge like that. So again, just by copying and pasting. So basically at this stage, we've created this little scene down at the bottom. And that's about half of what we're gonna do. Uh, we do have to trace out the motorcycle. But right now I'm gonna label this. This is my uh, compound layer, that's what we'll call it. And then I'm gonna create a new one and put it underneath it. We're actually gonna hide this layer here in a minute. I definitely want to lock it to make sure that I can't affect it. This one's gonna be motorcycle photo. And we'll start right there. So I'm gonna hide this one for the time being. And on this new layer, I'm going to place uh, this image that I downloaded of a motorcycle. So 
So you can see it's on my second layer now. And I also wanted to be flip the other direction, so I'm going to reflect it. And basically, I just want the silhouette, and I want these wheels to be hanging off either side of the canvas, because you can see in the sample here how it kind of hangs over the edges. It's important to the plot if you haven't seen the movie. So I'm also going to drop the opacity of this one using the parameter here on the top. And then I'm going to lock that layer. I'm going to go above it with a new layer and call this one Motorcycle Trace. And I'm going to give myself that sort of rough hewn tracing that I do with the pen tool, just clicking from point to point around it. I'm going to have a solid color selected, uh, but it's going to change at some point. And again, I have no stroke on the shape. So just using the pen tool, I'm going to... <clears throat> Start up here, and I'm going to click loosely around. I'm, I'm not worried about this looking super accurate. In fact, I want it to be a little bit rough. I want it to be kind of chunky and uh, slightly abstract. So these tire tread, I don't mind if they seem a little inconsistent. I'm just going to work my way around. You'll see that it's trying to figure out what kind of shape I'm making. And so it's behaving strangely, but the further I go, the more it's going to repair itself and the more it's going to give me no trouble. Got the handles up here. Places where it gets troublesome is right here where you can't really see where you're going because it starts to cover it up. If that gets too bad, you can always switch it over to stroke for the time being, just so you can see the outline without seeing uh, the solid color. But I've never found it to be troublesome enough to keep me from doing it this way. Whenever I do this in class, we do this tutorial in class, it's just a chorus of clicking. Once I get around to the edge, obviously anything that's off the canvas I'm not all that concerned about. It's only what's visible on the canvas that matters to me. So once I get off the canvas, I'm just going to start clicking around to finish out the shape. I'm just going to stay outside the edge and come back to my original point. So that gives me the, a shape like this. See, for right now, I'm going to take that shape and I'm going to make it orange just so I can see it. I'm going to hide this motorcycle photo and bring the compound back. So you can see now that we're starting to get that same look uh, from the source photo of these elements placed together. Now at the very bottom, I'm going to create a new layer and I'm going to call this background color. And people often ask me what's the easiest way to create a background color in uh, Illustrator. Honestly, it, the easiest way is just to put a rectangle over it and make sure that it's on that layer. Uh, then I can take my motorcycle and change it to something like white and it's beginning to come together. Background colors, whenever you put that on a layer like that, be sure to lock it. Use that little toggle lock option on the layer to make sure that you don't actually click it. Otherwise, that can be a real pain later. So depending on what I'm working on, if I'm not working on a layer, lock it so that you can't accidentally adjust it because you'll see even, you know, if I'm working on the compound and the motorcycle simultaneously, if I click one of them, that's the layer it takes me to. So you can accidentally start building on a layer that you did not intend to if you fail to lock them. So these, this is the first two methods. We'll get on to use of texture and the use of text and image trace in the second half of this tutorial. This one, all that we need to do is just build these basic constructs. And so if something went really quickly, just go back, skim through, try to find precisely what tool I was using, pause the video, look closely, uh, work at your own pace.